uh, good day, believers and brethren all over the world. Uh, welcome to another edition of our topic, The Moment of Grace. I want to thank you all for listening to us every week. And I pray that the Lord will continue to bless each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. And I pray that every knowledge you are acquiring shall be a blessing to you and to your family and to everything that you lay hands upon in the name of Jesus. Uh, today I want to welcome us to this channel one more time, Proper Media. And I pray that today everything that you are going to hear shall be a blessing as well in Jesus' name. Uh, my name is Afolabi Adeyeye from World Outreach Evangelical Ministry, Adoikiti chapter in Nigeria. Uh, today uh, we are moving on on our team, which is Moment of Grace. And but today's topic is is a call to a life of grace. A call to a life of grace. I want you to know that every child of God have received a call to a life of grace. The call that Christ, that God has called us through his son Jesus Christ is a call to a life of grace, not a life of struggle, not a life of tradition or religion, but a call to a life of grace. And I pray that as you listen this morning, you may you be blessed in the name of Jesus. And first of all, before we go further, let's look at the scripture. Our scripture for today is taken from the book of uh, Matthew, Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 11, uh, from verse 28. Matthew 11, from verse 28. The scripture says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Amen. Uh, verse 13 now say, it says, For my yoke is easy, and my body is light. Glory to God. Uh, today, just as I said, I said our topic is a call to a life of grace. Uh, if you look at this scripture very well, uh, the call that we receive uh, through Jesus Christ, from God through Jesus Christ, this call is for every child of God. It is from God through his son Jesus Christ. And that's why our Lord Jesus is saying here that he said, come ye unto me when he came into the world as it begins his ministry. He said, come ye unto me, come ye unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, you will have rest for your soul. And if you look at it very well in the Old Testament time, if you look at when God called them from the land of Egypt, it was a call to a rest. It was a call to a rest, although that was a shadow of the, of the reality. Uh, because the reality of that rest was in Christ. So when God called them out of the land of bondage in Egypt, it was, he, had, he promised them a place of rest, which was the typical uh, example of the re-rest. Re and God said he's taking them into the Canaan land. I said he's taking them to a land that is flow with milk and honey, which are uh, invariably become a place of their arrest where they will no longer struggle, they will no longer be under bondage, they will no longer be under the threat of anyone but in peace. So though it was the Bible made us to understand that that was not the real rest that the Joshua did not the, the, the Moses and Joshua did not give them real rest because we find out that when they got into the land they were still having issue with the surrounding nation. There was still war. They keep on fighting war from one world to another. And, and you can see that a time will come that when they now rebel against God, they were also taken to bondage back. Sometimes they were taken to Babylon. Sometimes it was Assyria nation. The nation around them was still a threat unto them. 
because that was a shadow of the reality because the reality of that rest was in christ jesus so every one of us that jesus has beckoned on that god has beckoned on through his son jesus is this one this rest is the rest of our soul is the rest in our spirit in our spirit so everyone that is born of god has become a partaker of this rest in jesus christ so and for you to have the, to be partaker of this rest you must believe in jesus you must accept him as your lord and personal savior and when you do all struggles will be over all struggles will be over you will find rest for your soul and the scripture has said here because that is exactly what god really want for us that is exactly what god desire for us because this kind of rest there is nothing that can take it away from you that can take it away from you there is no nation because it's not it's not an outward a rest it's not a rest of a place of a certain place it's not a rest of a of a, of a certain area is the rest that is placed upon your soul whereby your soul will be free from the bondage from the prison of the darkness and that is why the bible say it delivers us from the dominion of darkness and it translated into the kingdom of light of, of his son of his dear son jesus christ so it's a life it's a new life it, this rest is a, is, a, is a new life in christ jesus that jesus had bought for us on the cross of calvary so to everyone that believes in jesus so your struggles over your struggle ended the worries and everything ended like i said it is by your faith that you receive this and jesus has already made this available for us and he told us in verse 29 he said take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your soul so that means in other words you have it is important that you take his yoke that is what does it mean to take his yoke and learn so we need to learn that that is why i told up previously from the from second uh, timothy chapter 2 he said the grace of god chapter 2 verse 11 and 12 that appeared the, the grace of god that brought us salvation has appeared to all men has appeared to all men teaching us teaching us deny that deny ungodliness and worldly loss that we should live soberly and righteously in this present world we live so that it is by that is when we when we receive the grace the grace start teaching us it start teaching us that we deny ungodliness how to live a righteous life how to live a life that is worthy of the name of the lord contrary to what people say that when you have that because we are in the time of grace so that now we are not free to do what to like i have told us and have enlightened us and i brought some enlightenment on that previously that having been under grace is not a license to sin but a license to a life of of the spirit in christ jesus which will make you free from every other thing in the in the old testament because it was the law it was the law you know i said previously according to the scripture that the law was given by moses law was given by moses and and because the bible say law does not make anything perfect it can't bring rest it can't bring the true rest and that is why throughout their journey down to the canal land still they were they couldn't still find a resting place unto their soul until when the son of god show up and as many that have believed in jesus that have faith in jesus is entitled to that rest and god is bringing many sons many people into rest of souls this day through his son jesus christ and there's another scripture i would like us to see and that is the hebrew hebrew chapter 4 hebrew the book of hebrew chapter 4 hebrew chapter 4 verse 9 to 10 the book of hebrew 
chapter 4, verse 9, 10. The Bible says, it said, they are remaining, therefore, a rest to the people of God. Now, let me read the preceding verse so that you can really understand what I'm saying previously. Uh, the Bible says, from verse 4, it says, For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wife, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. So that means it saying that the previous people that had the mercy they couldn't enter into the rest because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief, he said again. He limited the certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart. For if, G if Joshua has given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. Then verse 10 said, For he that is entered into his reign, he also has ceased from his own work, as God did from his. So if the struggle will be over, stress will be over, worry will be over when you enter into his rest. And that rest was made available by the Son of God, by his grace. As you embrace the grace of God through Jesus Christ, then your soul will enter his rest. So all the struggles and everything will be over. Then in the book of Romans, in the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 13, the Bible also said, it said, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not unto Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith, through the righteousness of faith. That is to say, it is through your belief in Jesus that give you, the, the that make you to enter into that rest. And what does that rest mean? The rest simply means that you no longer struggle, you do no longer, it is no longer by your work. It is no longer by doors and do's and don'ts. It is by God's grace. It is by your faith in the perfect work of the cross, in the perfect work of redemption that Jesus has done. That is what earned you the rest as you believe. You know, just as we read in the, in the last scripture, in the Hebrew, when it says that they could not enter the rest because of unbelief, they could not find rest in their soul. They were looking for a place of rest in outwardly. They forgot it, that the rest was in them as we believe in him, as we have faith, as we have faith in the perfect work of redemption that he did on the cross and in his resurrection. Then we will begin to have rest. We will enter into that rest. We automatically enter into that rest and our life will no longer remain the same. And I want to pray for you today in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever is your struggle is, I want you to believe in Jesus. I want you to put your faith in him. I want you to begin to trust in the perfect work of redemption. That is the only thing that can give you rest. If you are looking for rest in the world, there is no place of rest in this world. The only place of rest is in Christ Jesus. And as you believe in him, you will begin to find rest in your soul. He said, the Bible says, he said, in this world, you will have trouble. In the book of John chapter 16, he said, in this world, you will have trouble. He said, but be of good share. But in me, you will have rest. You will have rest. You have rest. He said, but be of good share because I have overcome the world. It is only in Christ. That is where your rest is. That is where your resting place is. That is the where God has put his grace, we have, whereby you can obtain rest. And I pray for you today that you begin to have rest in the name of Jesus. And whatever it is that have been troubling your life, troubling your home, I declare rest upon your life. I declare peace of God upon your home. I declare rest upon everything you put your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever have been troubling your heart, I decree today 
you begin to have friends. Whatever has been affecting your body negatively, I pray for you today. From today, as you begin to listen to this, and as you begin to put your trust in Jesus, may you begin to obtain rest. May you begin to obtain peace in your body, in your life, and around you and within you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I use this time to call on those of us who have not believed in Jesus. It is time for you to surrender to Jesus. Because it's only him that can give you rest. Look at what he says in his word. He said, come ye unto me. Come ye unto me. He's still calling up to now. He's calling. Come ye unto me. All ye that are labor. Enough of laboring. Enough of laboring. God has made available a place of rest for every one of you. For every one of us. Let's embrace the grace in Christ Jesus that we may find rest for our soul. And as we do, the Lord will continue to bless you and me as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the grace of God continue to be upon your life and you continue to find rest in your soul. From no matter how turbulent the situation is, begin to find rest in your soul from be beginning from today in the name of Jesus Christ. I remain your friend, Pastor Afolabi, I dare you. Till we meet next, remain blessed. Shalom.